Am I the asshole for telling my wife the lock on my daughter's door does not get removed until my brother-in-law and his daughters are out of our house? My brother-in-law Sammy lost his home shortly after his divorce 10 months ago. He moved in with us and brought his twin daughters Olivia and Sloan 18 with him a couple of months ago. His sister, my wife, and I have one daughter, Zoe 16, and she and her cousins aren't close but get along fine. Olivia and Sloan have no respect for Zoe's privacy, none. They used to walk into her room and take everything they get their hands on. Makeup, phone, accessories, clothes, school laptop, etc. Zoe complained a lot and I've already asked the girls to respect Zoe's privacy and stop taking things. My wife and Sammy saw no issue with this. After all, they're girls and this is typical teenager girl behavior. I completely disagree. The last straw was when Zoe bought a $60 MAC makeup kit that looks like a paint set that she saved up for over a month and one of the girls, Sloan, took it without permission and ruined it by mixing sheets together while using it. Don't know much about makeup but that's what Zoe said when she found the kit on her bed and was crying. I told my wife and she said she asked Sloan to apologize but I got Zoe a lock after I found out she was moving valuable belongings out of the house because of this incident. The girls were extremely upset. Sammy asked about it and I straight up told him. He said, my girls aren't thieves. It's normal that girls of the same age borrow each other's stuff. He said that Zoe could easily get another makeup kit for $15 from Walmart and shouldn't even be buying expensive adult makeup in the first place and suggested my wife take care of this defect in Zoe's personality trying to appear older than she is. Oh, this is where the claws come out. He accused me of being overprotective and babying Zoe with this level of enablement. I told them that this is between me and my wife, but she shamed me for putting a lock on Zoe's door for her cousins to see and preventing them from spending time with her, saying I was supposed to treat them like daughters, then demanded I remove it, but I said this lock does not get removed until her brother and his daughters are out of the house. She got mad I was implying we kicked them out and said her family will hate me for this, so I reminded her that I let Sammy and his family move in, which is something her own family refused to do, so she should start with shaming or blaming them for not taking their own son and nieces and granddaughters in. If it wasn't for her family's unwillingness to help, we wouldn't be dealing with this much disturbance at home. Everyone's been giving me and Zoe silent treatment and my wife is very much upset over this. Go dad. Good for you. Am I the asshole for being upset with my son for finding a job without telling me? My son is 18. He is going to be attending community college and is living with me, my husband, and his two younger half-sisters. The other day I found out that he found and accepted a job without telling me. I was upset with him about it and the reason for that is that, first of all, he should have told me since we live in the same house. And also, and more importantly, now I'm left without someone to stay with the girls from three to eight, where my shift starts and ends. My son is usually the one to stay home with the girls, and his new job is during these hours. So one way or another, we are impacted. He told me his friend found him this job and it just happened, but I don't think it did because he knew he had to give up staying with his sisters while I work. My husband travels most of the time, he's a pilot, and paid childcare is a no for me. My son said I shouldn't be surprised by him trying to work to save money to be able to pay for himself, but that is just absurd since he literally lives with us without having to pay for anything except for his own entertainment. He said he needed the job and he wasn't realistically going to stay and watch his sisters for days on end, especially since he doesn't get paid for it. We kept arguing and my husband got involved and he too was upset saying that my son had no respect for us. My son basically had a like it or not attitude with us and kept refusing to discuss this with us saying we have no right to be upset with him and should just accept it. But I'm just, I think that he's being inconsiderate of my husband's and I's struggles to provide for the family as a whole. This should mean something to him. But he acted so selfishly. Story time about how I scammed my followers out of $20,000. I started out as an influencer on Instagram a few years ago. A few of my posts went viral and after a month I had a million followers. Suddenly I had so many brands reaching out to me. Some of the brands I had never heard of. So I didn't really answer back. But I did start working with some brands that I did know. The only problem was that they would only pay me about $70 to $100 per post. 
By the way, I had a lot of debt at the time, so only making that much was not working for me. I decided to ask for more money, but some of the brands just wouldn't pay it. So by the end of the first month, I had only made about $500. That was not enough to pay my rent, and I was not about to get a day job. I had a million followers on Instagram. I was a glorified influencer. So instead, I started reaching out to some of these brands that I had never heard of before. One of them was offering me $5,000 to post a link on my story for three days. Of course, I accepted. Part of me thought that it was a scam, but I didn't care at the time. I needed the money. After three days of posting the link, they paid me the $5,000. I was able to pay my rent, my car insurance, and my phone bill. But here's the thing. I started getting a bunch of DMs from my followers who were super angry. They were calling me a scammer and a bunch of other names. So I decided to do some investigating, and I found out that the whole thing was a scam. When I started seeing all the angry messages from my followers, I asked them what was wrong. One girl sent me screenshots of all the stuff that she had bought with the link that I posted. She told me that she googled the company and that it was a scam. So I decided not to reply back to her. I wrote to the company and told them that I was getting a lot of hate messages. But of course, the company ghosted me. I saw five other messages and they were all basically saying the same thing. That the website was a total scam and that they had purchased stuff off of it. But here's the thing. For the first time, I had money. So I decided to just ignore it. Which I know is a bad thing. But like, it's also their fault for not doing their research. But I did learn my lesson. After that, I googled every single company that ever reached out to me. But here's where it gets worse. Two weeks later, I get another five thousand dollar check from the same company but i was so happy i deposited that check really fast so here's what i had to do i blocked every single person who told me that the website was a scam and then i just tried to forget about it i also had to delete all the hate comments and a few weeks after that i get another five thousand dollar check I had $15,000 in the bank. I had made $15,000 from all of the scams, but it didn't stop there. A few weeks later, I got another $5,000 check. So in total, I had $20,000. This was the most money I'd ever had in my life, and I was not about to send it back. But I was still getting a lot of hate on Instagram. I ended up blocking over 500 people. And then finally, the company reached out to me. I told them my followers were saying that they were scamming them, but the company made up some excuse saying that the shipments had been delayed and that my followers would receive all their purchases. Then they offered me another $5,000 to post a different link. And guess what? Of course I accepted. They offered me $7,000 this time. I knew very well that this was probably another scam, but I still accepted. A few days later, I posted the link, but the payment never came. I waited a few weeks before contacting the company, and they ghosted me. I wrote to them every single day, but I never got the $7,000. So guess what? I also got scammed too. It's been two years since that happened, and I don't feel bad about it. I now make a lot more money than $20,000, but we all start somewhere. Part of me does feel guilty for scamming everyone, so sometimes I think about possibly paying them back. And don't start trying to guess in the comments who I am. You will never guess. Or maybe you will. Whatever. I'm $20,000 richer. Bye. Story time about how my abusive ex is dating my sister to get back at me. I just want to clarify that my sister and I really have a good relationship. My parents taught us to be best friends, but my manipulative ex came between us. I met my ex in college, and he was the player of the school. He had a new girlfriend every single week, but for some reason, he decided to chase me. And of course, at first, I was super flattered. He completely manipulated me into believing that he loved me, and that I was the most special girl out of everyone in the school, and that I wasn't like the other girls. The worst part is that my parents wanted me to focus on school, so I started dating him behind my parents back. After dating for a few months, he started changing. He started getting super controlling and very jealous. He would monitor everything I did and ask me questions about everything. Who I was going out with, who my friends were, and God forbid there were any guys in my classes. He would stress me out so much that it would take my appetite away and I started losing weight. It got so bad that anytime he would text me or call me, my hands would start sweating and I would get instantly nervous. He always made me feel like I was in trouble or like I did something wrong. I decided to break up with him so I went to his apartment and things went horribly wrong. As soon as I told him, he punched a hole into his wall and basically kidnapped me for five hours he wouldn't let me leave his apartment after i told him i didn't want to be with him anymore he basically locked me in his apartment for five hours and he wouldn't let me leave he punched a hole in his wall and just cried the entire time i finally convinced him to let me leave and after that he would not leave me alone he started sending me flowers to convince me to get back with him but i wouldn't respond to anything for an entire week he would call me every single day multiple times a day eventually i blocked his number and i thought that everything was fine by the way nobody knew that i was dating this guy i didn't tell my parents because they didn't want me to be dating anyone during college and of course i didn't tell my sister I didn't want to stress her out. After a few weeks, I went home for spring break. My family and I had planned to just stay home, watch movies, and eat good food. But when I got home, my sister started telling me about this new guy she met. At first, I was really excited for her until she showed me his Instagram. It was my ex. She told me he sent her a message on Instagram and that they had gone on a few dates. I was absolutely horrified. And right then and there, I told my sister the truth. I showed her all the abusive messages that he had sent me, and I told her about how controlling and jealous he was. But my sister started to cry and told me that she was already in love with him. And she also told me that she lost his v-card to him my sister calls him and confronts him that's when he told my sister that i was the abusive one that he was trying to get away from me that's when my
my crazy ex decided to tell my sister that I was the abusive one in the relationship and that I wouldn't leave him alone. At this point, I could tell my sister was super confused and hurt. I grabbed the phone from her and hung it up. I then explained to her that he was always so manipulative and that he would make me believe anything. I begged her to block him and she wouldn't. So I had no choice but to go to my parents and tell them the truth. I told them I had a boyfriend behind their back and that now he was trying to date my sister to get back at me. I told them the whole truth about how abusive he was and of course my parents were devastated. They went to my sister's room but she wasn't there anymore. That's when I found her phone and saw the messages. She went over to my ex's house. It's like he had her under the spell. So my parents and I went straight to my ex's house. That's when my sister told us that she would be moving in with him and that I was only trying to separate them because I was jealous. I got my friends to call her and tell her about how abusive he was and she finally started believing them. My sister finally came home a few days later but she still wants to be with him. I'm only 45 minutes away from school so I decided to stay home. My parents and I are trying to keep her from seeing him. The good news is I finally got a restraining order against my ex. But what else can I do at this point? Please give me advice. Story time, my boyfriend cheated on me, so I cheated on him with his cousin. So a little background information, I was 18 and a freshman in college. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for three years going on four. And we were pretty much what you call a very toxic relationship. We would break up with each other, then get back together five minutes later. I would say that it's all really my boyfriend's fault. Because instead of spending time with me, he would rather go out to the club and sleep with any whore that he could find. But he would always start an argument with me before he went to the club so that way he had a reason to cheat on me. And he's been doing this ever since we first started dating. I don't know why I didn't take that as a red flag, but I'm a dumb bitch who lacks common sense and is completely blind to red flags. So I started a private Snapchat, but I used it as almost like an OnlyFans. Except it was free. I added a bunch of guys on there and my boyfriend's cousins. His one cousin was my best friend and would low-key hype me up. So like I said, I made this private Snapchat that was basically like an OnlyFans. And I had his cousin on there who was low-key my best friend. And he would low-key always hype me up on my thirst traps. So eventually I sent him a whole nude picture of myself. His cousin had a girlfriend, but neither of us were going to tell our significant others. And I told his cousin that I would sleep with him if he cheats on me again. Well, what do you know? A few nights later, he calls me starting an argument before he goes to the club. So I go to bed. I'm bawling my eyes out. And he calls me at 3 in the morning asking for me to get an Uber for him and some friends. But I hear a girl talking in the back. So obviously I gave him a hard time about it. So he hangs up on me, calls me 20 minutes later, and I hear this girl talking in Spanish in the background. Me being me, I assume the worst. I assume that he cheated on me. So he calls me the next day saying that we need to talk. I go over there. He says he doesn't want to be with me anymore. So like I said, he calls me over to his house. He says that I'm the problem in the relationship. I'm the reason why he cheats on me 24-7. So I'm like, you know what? Whatever. I leave and I go to his cousin's house and his cousin kind of does the deed on me. After that, I leave because I really wasn't trying to do the nasty. So a few weeks later, my boyfriend texts me saying, I need to talk to you, da-da-da. And we're not together at this point, mind you. And he's like, hey, like, I just feel like you're really not being honest with me. Like, I want to get back together, but I feel like you're unfaithful. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? You literally cheat on me 24-7. So I give him my phone to go through it. I thought I deleted everything, but I didn't delete a conversation between my best friend and I. So I'm bawling my eyes out, turn on my game face for lying. And I'm like, I swear to God, like, I didn't cheat on you. It was a prank. But he did the nasty with that girl, so I think we're even. So obviously I got back with him and we've been together for four years. Hi, my name is Rita. I come from a very traditional Indian joint family with two mean stupid aunts. Everyone was super excited for my birth, but when they saw my dusky complexion and curly dark hair, my aunt literally screamed. Ugh, this baby is ugly. She's nothing like Lavina. Lavina was my elder sister, and she was everything my family wanted. Fair, skinny, with brown hair and hazel eyes, she was the jewel. While me, I was always pushed to the back for photos, given hand-me-down clothes, and the smallest slice of cake. Lavina was always on my side. You're totally beautiful, Rita. Don't listen to our stupid relatives. It was hard not to listen. Like one year for Dwali, my aunts blindfolded me and Lavina to take us to our gift. I was so excited when I opened my eyes and saw a huge walk-in closet with unlimited outfits. Oh, wow! Is this for us? No, just for Lavina. For you, we got this treadmill. But don't worry, Rita. We can share the clothes. No, you can't. These clothes are for pretty girls only. I was so mad that I walked up to the treadmill and turned it on. 
My aunt's feet slid out from under her and she crashed to the floor. I ran out of there as she started chasing me with a slipper. My parents should have controlled my aunt, but they were too busy fighting with each other. They couldn't stand to be in the same room without breaking out into a screaming match. This meant that our aunts could boss us around all day. But I always found a way to mess with them. I put bleach in their laundry to ruin all of their beautiful saris. If they yelled at me for having curly hair, I spat in their evening tea. One time, my aunts tried to make me put on skin whitening cream. I squeezed it out into their food. There, you eat it. If you have this skin, no one will marry you. If the only thing boys care about is white skin, then I don't want to marry them. I was bold. but I was secretly beginning to believe that I wasn't pretty. And there's only one way for a not very good looking person to be respected in India. Studies, studies, studies. I had to be at the top of my class every single year without fail. Lavina was whisked off to kitty parties and dance functions with my aunt. And I would stay back at the empty house and put all my focus into my schoolwork. When I came first in the district in 10th grade, Lavina forced the family to host a party for me. Who cares if she's smart? You could marry a millionaire any day, Lavina. That would be a real achievement. Rita can become a millionaire by herself. She's a genius. And we're going to celebrate her. Aw, I loved my sister. We planned the whole event together, and we even convinced our parents to join in. You can take a break from fighting for one night. Promise? We promise. Obviously, that didn't work out. It was an hour into my party. Everyone from school was here, eating and dancing, when my aunt walked up to the DJ and turned off the music. We just want to say, we are so proud of Rita for getting good marks. Even though she's ugly, at least she has brains. My classmates looked confused. Rita isn't ugly. Are you crazy? That curly hair, those big eyes, I think she's gorgeous. No, she's not. She's prettier than you are. My classmates laughed and my aunts gave me the death stare. It's so funny that you all think Rita is smart when she doesn't even know her parents are getting a divorce. What? Divorce.